Hello everyone, I greet in the name of God Almighty. My name is Supposed to Nathan Silas and today we have a very interesting video to react to by Ostas Wahaj and he says that the power of a mother. I believe that this is going to be a very interesting um, video for some of you who still have your mother alive. So if today happens to be the first time of you taking out my channel, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my Facebook and Instagram. And if you have any video you want me to react to, don't forget to drop it at the comment section and I'm going to check it out. So guys, before we get on to the video, I'm a theologian and I make this video not to discredit anyone's thought or opinion or belief system. This is basically for educational purposes and I believe that at the end of this video, we all are going to learn from this so guys without any further i do let's get down to this video and check this out the power of a mother bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ba'd my topic is um, the power of of a mother and um, in our time especially certain challenges are increasing divorce is increasing family breakups are increasing it is increasingly putting women um, and families um, in very vulnerable situations, especially psychologically, uh, where they feel that they are, you know, in a position of weakness, what do I do, and so on and so forth. So, um, I want to tell you that perhaps one of the most powerful individuals uh, on the face of this earth is a mother. Um, I have a I have a knack for searching great people in history. Um, I like biographies. And I study their lives like a puzzle. You know, what made him become that? So, khalas, he did something great. What made him become that? One of those people that I came across is Alexander the Great. Uh, hands up those who have heard that name, Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great is great not by the definitions of his friends or his posse or he's great by the definitions of history you know he left Macedonia conquered Asia Minor went to Bilad -e sham conquered the Levant came to Iraq took over Babylon came to Persia took over our lands went to India semi-conquered India and then made his way back to um, to Macedonia and died on the way and uh, you ask yourself what drives a person relatively young for a conquest as big as this because it's not an ordinary thing you know I don't see you getting up to conquer the world Akhi. yes it's not an ordinary thing so I rewind and, and, and search, you know, what was it that made this person this great Alexander? And the secret is, is in an utterance of his mother, according to my humble analysis. His mother used to tell him this. She used to say, you are the son of Zeus. Zeus in Greek mythology was the god of gods. He was their biggest. And obviously I don't encourage you to do this. Wallahi alhamd, we are Muslims and this is, you know, issue of, uh, you know, this is just to, to establish my point. And she used to tell him the story that when you were in my womb, I had this extraordinary experience and, and um, you're, you're the son of Zeus. So can you imagine... A child feeling growing up with such a self-efficacy that I am not in the realm of men I am one of the gods he was 10 years old they brought a gift to his father a horse that was untamed the father himself Philip was a king couldn't go near it but this young Alexander says I will jump on it and tame it and it will become my mount what made the child so confident such a degree of self-efficacy that I can it is the utterance of that mother so to myself the most powerful being is the mother 
And don't think this is just Alexander the Great. Go search the annals of human history. Where there's greatness, there's a mother that made it. And a lot of times these mothers were single mothers. And some, although they were married, but their life situation was still single. Rabi'atul Ra'i, he was one of the big scholars of Islam, but his father was in the army of the son of Uthman ibn Affan. He went towards our areas, Khurasan. And there he lasted for many, many years. And by the time he came back, young, young uh, Rabi'ah, uh, you know, would have been grown into a man. But before he left, he gave the mother 30,000 coins. You know, he is this, look after yourself till I come back. Khurasan's a long way off. When he came back, as is the sunnah, he went to the masjid first. And in the masjid he saw, there's a young man sitting in a huge multitude around him. He is one of the seven fuqaha of, of Medina. So feeling some, like, what a man, what an achievement. He came home. The, the, young, the man is still in the mud. He doesn't know it's my son. So he came home and talking to the wife, he goes, what did you do with the 30,000? So she said, go to the masjid, you will see your son. So he went to see subhanallah and he said, you spent it well. Do you see the one that made that ordinary Rabi into one of the giant of the scholars was the wisdom and the thought and the planning and the strategy and the vision and the outlook of that awesome woman who could have gone and bought shoes, but instead she bought an education and a life for um, us to look, look up to till Qiyamah come. The famous man, Imam Malik, rahimahullah ta'ala, Imam Malik, the scholars say, in, in, in Imam Malik is a giant of the Ahlul Ilm. They say, uh, the young man wanted to be a singer. Did you know that? Malik, rahimahullah, Malik wanted to be a singer. And Malik's father is paralyzed. Did you know that? Imam Malik's father is paralyzed. He was very limited, so he used to make arrows. That was his way of living. He used to make arrows and sell the arrows. So young Malik told his mom, I, I want to be a singer because singers were looked after and you know, there, there was pomp and ceremony around them. So this, this intelligent, intelligent, intelligent creature, the, this, this mother of Imam Malik, rahimahullah ta'ala, tells him, says, uh, Malik, um, singers are good looking. And this is to just sow doubt in his head, although Imam Malik is very good looking. And their career only lasts whilst they're young and good looking. And instead, she directed his attention towards ilm. You know how she went and bought him clothing of the ulama. You know, the, the turban and the, and the bisht. And, and she used to wash him and perfume him and sit him up and then ask him questions on the sufra. Uh, Malik, how many raka'ah is in zuhr? So Malik used to feel like a scholar and say four. She changed his projectile towards ilm. And, and understand this, Muslims. You don't need money to create greatness. You don't need resources to create. All research, research state, states the same. It is the capacity of the mother and the capacity of a teacher that builds greatness. So interest sparked in the heart of Malik and then the rest became just mechanics. So one of his famous sheikhs is Nafi' Mawla Ibn Umar. Uh, uh, you know, the student of Ibn Umar uh, and the, the freed slave of Ibn Umar. And this is called the golden chain of narration and hadith for those who, who, who study hadith. The, the, Imam al-Shafi'i from Imam Malik, from Nafi' from Ibn Umar, from the Prophet of Allah, they call this the golden chain. So, Nafi' was a strict man. He, you know, he didn't have time for people all the time. Sheikh, can I ask questions? You know, time-wasting. Nafi' 
rahimahullah ta'ala wa radiyallahu anhu used to go to the mosque at a specific time. His dars was from this time to this time. If you have questions, ask then. Once I'm home, you do not intervene and interfere. I have to do my research and my study. So Malik knew, th knew this and is sitting in a gathering with his huge scholars. He wouldn't ever get a chance to ask. So look at the ingenuity of the man, a product of the thirst for knowledge that the mom has instilled in him. He used to go and wait outside the house of Nafi'. And then he used to walk with him to the mosque, just pretending this is coincidental. And when they used to take their shoes off at the door, Malik used to take his shoes off and look at the Sheikh and say, Salaamu Alaikum. And then they used to enter. After the dars and the salah used to finish, you know, because Sheikh, my shoes is next to your shoes. I'm not stalking you, you know, this is coincidence. He used to walk back with him. And now they had acquaintance, they knew each other. So he used to say, Sheikh, what about this hadith and what about this hadith? And Malik became Imam Malik at the hands of this lady. Imam Muhammad ibn Idris al-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala. Go search history. He was, some scholars say, when he was in the womb of his mom, the father passed away. Some say a couple of months after his birth, the father passed away. Who made Muhammad ibn Idris al-Shafi'i Imam al-Shafi'i? And what did she have? Financially, she was very poor. But she designs the whole curriculum of this young lad more than any scholar of our time could. She took him to Mecca. Go learn the Quran now. She sent him to this Rabi'atul Ra'i. Go learn his manners before you learn the deen from him. He became a hafiz, started to study hadith. Then she said, you need language, so go to the desert near Mecca and go and stay for years with the Arab tribe so that your language, you become master of the language. Go to Imam Malik in Medina and study the Muwatta. And Shafi'i Imam, you know, became Imam al-Shafi'i at the hands of this woman. My sisters, they have talked, you know, the time is very limited to speak, but you make or break the future generation. And you brothers have a responsibility to build and educate and honor and respect and make mothers and sisters who have the capacity to bring about greatness or you can keep them, you know, the backward and educated, immaterial and mattered individuals who will bring generation after generation of failures. And understand this. And you know, so far my evidence is from history. Look at the Quran. Because you will say, Ustaz, what is the deal for this? You go, look at the Quran. When the mother was good, look at Ismail alayhi salam. Single mother brought him up in the desert. From a father who left him there since young and came back at all, you know, when he had reached manhood. Had she been a poor mother, a weak mother, and you know, an unfaithful mother, she would have poisoned his head with, where was he for your second birthday? Where, why didn't he buy you this? Why didn't he come for your celebration? He would, didn't even give me a Valentine's gift. Instead, when he comes years later, a prophet of God, seeing Ismail alayhi salam, he utters this proposition, my son, I have seen in a dream, anni azbahuk, that I am sacrificing you, fanzur madha tara, then see what is your opinion. And the upbringing of a righteous mother is this, Ya abati fa'al ma tu'mar, satajiduni insha'Allah. Oh my father, do as you have been commanded. You will find me by the grace of Allah, of those who will bear it patiently. That is an upbringing of a righteous mother, of an intelligent mother, of a far-sighted mother. And when you look at the other side, the wife of a prophet, ضرب الله مثلا للذين كفروا امرأة نوح وامرأة لوط كانتا تحت عبدين من عبادنا صالحين فخانتهما. Two wives of two prophets, Nuh and Lut, 
عليهم أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم. And the father is a prophet, yet the mother is a disbeliever. The son became a disbeliever. And the father, the Quran records it. يا بني ركم معنا ولا تكم. Oh my son, come with us and don't be of those who are left behind. He says, I will go into the mountain. I will resist the punishment of Allah, رب العزة. So Allah destroyed him. Nuh عليه السلام says, يا رب, he was my from my family, and you promised the protection of my family. Allah, رب العزة says, he wasn't from your family. إنه عمل غير صالح. He was an unrighteous deed. Do you see the mother, my sisters? Perhaps for some the time is too late. The children have already grown. I give you an advice, ورب الكعبة from the depth of my heart. Bring up your children to become successful parents and successful upbringers of the next generation. Otherwise, the graveyards will become filled with capacity in Jews that never reach their flourishing. Generations will come and generations will go. For your time and patience, I thank you. I have, I have taken, I have trespassed on your patience yet again. May Allah Rabbul Izzah reward you and guide you and guard you. Um, keep your brother in your dua. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Wow. That's a very interesting um, video by um, Imam Ostas. Of course, um, we have learned the power of a woman. We have looked at um, the couple of um, successful um, people in this very um, video. Hmm. We are raised by their mothers. And their greatness was based on what their mothers were saying to them when they were young. And that's when we look at um, Alexander the Great, of course, as the mother keeps saying that he's a son of a Zeus, so at that point in time he grew to see himself as a god, and that is why he was able to what, to conquer the world. We could look at him, um, for instance, Imam um, Malik. Despite you understand his family upbringing, it did not stop him from becoming a great scholar, right? And why all these things is because of his mother. We could look at Lut alayhi salam. So the question is. You as a mother or you as a father, what are you saying to your children? It means that whatever a guardian or a mother or a father say to their children directly have an effect in their life decision or what they are going to grow to become. Now, we could look at in the mother of Alexander the Great because she says to him that he's a son of Jesus and he see, he see himself in a sense as a god and at the end of the day he end up growing in a sense and become in a sense the great king that is being remembered in a sense in the history today so the question is what do you say to your children are you saying to them just like the way the mother of Malik in a sense did that her child in a sense keep on going to the mosques and then learning from the sheikh to the point that he end up in a sense becoming one of the greatest in a sense scholars so as a mother we are being in the society whereby we have to, um, men raping in a sense women and sometimes women even raping in a sense men and so many kind of uncertainty happening in our society so the question is a child that you see that went on to go and rape another woman is being raised by a mother. But the question is, when the child is young, what does the mother say to the child? What you as a father say to your child? Do you say to them that, look, you are the son of God? I know that, of course, people might have different um, explanation to this, but I'm talking about in a son as a human. Imagine that we are saying to your child that, he is the son of God. How do you think the child will grow and be thinking? Will the child, in a sense, be going on, in a sense, to involve or engage him or herself, in a sense, in some of those things, bad things, in a sense, happening in our society? Because at that point in time, the child begins to prepare its mind on things that has to do with God. So what do we say to them? Of course, you understand, when you see, you understand, people went on, you understand, drinking or smoking or doing any other things, you understand, that we consider as religious um, people to be wrong. Don't forget, those children are being raised by a mother. But the question is, as a mother, 
what do you do what do you say to them it means that as a guardian you have a primary responsibility to be able to raise your children in the way of the lord when they look at them of course that's why the bible says that by their fruit we shall know them and then how do you know them is because of their manifestation some of the things you understand they do and how they conduct themselves that is when you can be able to know or look and says that look this person behave like so so, so person or this person behave like you understand newton why would they say so is because of when they see the behavior of the child they can be able to say look this is the daughter of apostle newton or this is the son of newton but if you do not raise them in a sense in the sight of god how they're going to grow in a sense knowing god and understanding or even working and doing things in a sense for the kingdom of god from there, they can be able to ask questions. And that is why you see when a child go and then begin to behave somehow. And then they'll be asking, are you sure this child is from so-so-so and so person? Why? It's because of their behavior, the characters, the things you understand they do. And how they conduct themselves in the, in the society. Those are the things that people look and then they begin to ask questions. So as a mother or as a father or as a guardian, we all have a primary responsibility to be able to raise our children in the way of the lord please let's take into this and then take this video very seriously this is something that cut across in sense, every religion irrespective of whether you are a muslim a hindu or a christian or a jew is something that because for all this thing that is happening in the world today you see so many things in essence happening is as the result of parental upbringing which i think that after watching this video Let's try to, to have a change of heart. Because of a mother, one mother, right? We see, we saw what Innocent Alexander the Great Innocent did. So the question is, you that is listening to me, of course, the change can start with me, it can start with you. And it's all about how we are able to raise our children. A very interesting video, and I know that a lot of you have thought and opinion in a sense concerning this, and I want you to drop it at the comment section. Let's all learn from one another. So this is the end of my video if you like my reaction if you like share and subscribe and if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and i'm going to check it out so guys you remain blessed and i see you in my next video bye bye